All right, guys, welcome back. We are actually jumping into game two of a series here. We do have JT Dota here uh, facing off against uh, Team Covenant, as they're listed in the client. I'm Zayori, and uh, actually one of my buddies joining me here for this match is going to be Mr. CO2 Nos. And uh, actually, this was a remake into all picks. So we're going to go ahead and get right into the game, and we'll introduce the heroes here in just a moment. First things first, though, Mr. CO2 Nos, how are you feeling today? Good, sir. Well... The fact that I got sleep and you didn't, uh, I'm feeling way better than you probably are, but wow. uh, I'm looking forward to uh, this match. We got some pretty good hero lineup on the uh, Radiant side here. Yep, absolutely right. So, um, yeah, uh, JT is up 1-0 in this series, I do believe. So, like I said, it is game number two, and we'll see how they fare. Lineup here for the Dyer on uh, Team Covenant is going to be Opa Opa on the Enigma. They're going to see, uh, I, I can't read these names while they're running. All oh, Custy on the Jakiro, uh, Fiz, G on uh, the Juggernaut. Um, you're going to see Dondi on the Beastmaster, and, um, well, this this cute little guy on uh, the Karabulus. Over here on the Radiant side, on the JT, we do have a Dark Seer, uh, as well as a Disruptor, who may get uh, first blooded here. We've got Smurf on the Shadow Fiend. Got a Leshrac here in the mid, and then up in the top lane, we're going to have Derp Derp playing the Tidehunter. So a pretty interesting lineup of heroes. And I know with that new patch, a lot of them have changed. Shadow Fiend is one of them, and uh, he does a, a lot of crazy stuff now. I'll actually be excited to see how he fares in this game and how he farms. I was kind of surprised to see all five of them go bottom jungle, but I guess uh, they realized what was happening and called them out to the rest of the team. And I guess you know now they're all going to miss out on that extra experience that you know the other teams getting. <laughs> yeah, looking for those early words. I see the pulls warded down here in the bottom lane, so that is going to limit lane control a little bit for the disruptor shadow fiend duo. Uh, up against the solo Beastmaster, though he doesn't really seem too interested. He's just going to stack these Ancients. Well, and really do what Rexar does best in this kind of a scenario. Looks like Ishkafel here is going to be uh, in the jungle a little bit. We're going to have Lesh solo mid against the Krobulus. And uh, it'll be kind of interesting. I, I always love seeing a Lesh in a little bit more of a sort of a carry style role instead of just a hard support. And solo mid will be able to pick up. Nice bit of experience, of course, in the top. We did introduce Derp Derp here on the Tide Hunter. He's going to be suicide against the Jakiro Juggy. I know Jakiro was changed a little bit in this path, uh, in this patch. They changed uh, the way Ice Path works a little bit, and I think overall it was considered a buff here for Jakiro. So I'll be interested to see how he fares as well. Enigma also going to be in the jungle, so a nice uh, change of pace. I don't know. What do you think here, CO2 Nos? Do you like one team over the other? I see a lot of carries, definitely, on the uh, Dire team. I mean, Beastmaster could definitely carry if he's played right. You got Jakiro, you got Juggernaut. I'm not sure why they put the two carries. Well, I guess Jakiro, he's not really so much of a well, carry. Now, he's more support. I, I don't but... know what to say about him now. Before, I, I don't know, because he was just never used. Now, um, we'll see. I mean, in lane with Juggy, he's going to be supporting a little bit. Looking at the last hits, Juggy uh, sitting 5 and 6. And uh, Jakiro here not picking up any of the farm, kind of uh, as we would expect. So he's just going to be playing kind of that babysitter role for now. Juggy will probably carry uh, pretty hard here. And uh, we're interested to see how Death Prophet does as well. Um, I don't know. I mean, she's sort of not quite a carry, but one of those great mid-game kind of semi-carries. Sort of a Queen of Pain style, or at least that's the way I think of her in my head. So we'll see how she fares looking at the middle farm. Lesh is way ahead, sitting 14 and 3, and actually just looking at the We got last something hits. happening top lane now. That is all green. Yeah, and then we're going to come in. Stone on Tide Hunter. We got a Ice Path going down. Tide's down. And that's going to be an easy first blood here. Juggernaut going to be the one to pick it up. So that Tide, man, he was up way too far for a suicide Tide, especially since they have no ward coverage. They knew Enigma was in the jungle. Simply just can't be up that far, man. Yeah, I'm not sure why he was playing so aggressive. Uh, I guess oh, he just kind of figured that Chikiro couldn't do anything to him. So he was just sitting up front there, but I definitely agree they should de they should have threw some wars down or something. 
Yeah, well, I mean, it's just one of those things you either need to play super defensive. I mean, notice the difference in how Rexar is playing down here in the bottom lane. He is so passive. I mean, he's stacking to keep stacking these ancients, but he's so passive. He knows disruptors right there. They do have, well, a ward in the pool, but he knows disruptors there. There's not much you can do. It's an inevitable that Shadow Fiend's going to get free farm, and Tide sort of needs to make the same revelation. He's not going to be able to do much as in the way of shutting down farm. Just needs to pick up experience wherever he can, so... See how it goes, but uh, in this mid lane, man, unfortunately for Crobulus, he is just not having a fun time. This Lesh is really doing a nice job picking up a lot of farm. And uh, it's going to be nice to see what a farmed Lesh can do. I'll be curious to see what build he goes as well. I think Bloodstone may be the eventual route of choice here, but uh, it is a little bit rare that we see Lesh playing more of this kind of primary farmer role. So. Uh, a lot of options available for him, for sure. We are going to see a pause come out. I'm not entirely sure why. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, it looks okay. like there was one person that was a super slow loader. Maybe he's having lag issues. Well, not a very long pause at that. So Shadow Fiend here, he is leading the way in farm though. 31 and 23. He's setting up at 20 souls right now. He's going to be scary in this game. Now the big change if... Um, let's see. Let me see. Here. They, they changed the way his ult works. And I read it and now I'm forgetting. Because oh, I'm totally like Beastmaster. Yeah. Yeah, reps are going to fall, of course. Uh, pretty easy kill there for Shadow Fiend. He does have his Shadow Rays. Uh, maxed out, well, maxed out for level 5 at least, so uh, relatively easy kills. He actually wanted to pick up the kill. Uh, yeah, he was. So that's even a scarier, the leading farmer now picking up uh, a kill in this game. I think Shadow Fiend is going to carry quite a I know they did buff his uh, Presence of the Dark Lord. Uh, I, I believe it used to cap out at 5 armor, and now it's minus 6. So that does help quite a bit. Um, I'm, I'm kind of surprised he didn't even pick that up yet. Yeah. Oh, and th that's what it is. So when he dies now, his, his ult goes off automatically. Around half the souls. That was the change that I was spacing on. They're just going to dive this tower. Smurf can try and pick up the kill here. One more auto attack. Ought to do it. That's going to be the end of Rexar. And uh, Shadow Fiend now going to be sitting 2 0. He is in damn good shape. He's just going to be able to pop that potion and um, you know, just get back on track. He's actually going to go hand of Midas here. Uh, a nice 545 Hand of Midas. That is going to be very good news for him. And I think we'll see his farm just get out of control. As if it wasn't already. And glancing at the gold difference, a nice uh, 2500 lead for the Radiant and experience in a similar boat around 2k. So, Team JT Dota off to a good start. We'll see how they continue to fare. Unfortunately, Rexar, he was doing pretty well. I was pretty complimentary of how he was doing in this suicide lane. But now that he's conceded two deaths... Compared to the one of Tide, um, not doing quite so well. At least Tide's been able to pick up uh, 12 creep kills here. He's actually getting pretty close to level 6. So once that Ravage comes out, perhaps Derp Derp will start moving about the map. I was just looking at the uh, gold per minute, too, and we got Shadow Fiend sitting up at about 500, and their highest is, uh, looks like Juggernaut at 284, so. All right, it's quite I, a I have a question here. You played Han. Is that is that the real tobacco from Han? Is that the same guy? The Lesh? Is that him? It's spelled the same. Small fucking world, man. Probably is. I mean, I can't imagine too many people would have a weird ass name spelled that way. But in the bottom lane, we did miss another kill onto Rexar. So Smurf is just farming him up. And we see uh, Death Prophet with the ultimate, but he's gonna get caught. In the kinetic field from Disruptor, it's going like the kinetic field, and that will keep Shadow Fiend alive. So very nicely done. Wow, I'm I'm really want to know if that's the real tobacco. It, it's such a, a unique handle that I feel like it, it almost has to be. Like who would steal that handle because it's so weird? But that's that's crazy, man. If that's really him, that uh, just just makes me feel good. I know who he is, man. I can identify someone in this game. It's a uh, to boost my EP in a little bit. Oh, up in the top so lane, top. Jakiro, you're going to be in a little bit of trouble, and that's uh, going to be an easy kill. Ishkoffel going to be the one to pick up that kill. Taking a look at farm here, we still see the three leading farmers, Darkseer, Lesh, and Shadow Fiend. So kind of the, the trifecta here uh, for this Radiant team. They're in great shape, man. Just looking at the net worth. 
we can see just the three of them kind of uh, hopping to skip ahead of everyone else. Juggy, the, the only one kind of on par for the course right now. And he's doing all right up in this top lane, but not nearly as well as he needs to be. Let's see, what's his creep score? 24 and 11. Ouch. Really needs to be a lot higher, especially against a solo tide when he has a babysitter. I would expect that farm to be significantly higher than that. Gonna see more initiation up here in the top lane. Shakiro and Juggy both in a little bit of trouble. Looks like Lesh picked up a kill onto Krobulus in the mid lane. And uh, Shikalfa gonna go in with that Ion shell. That's gonna be the end of Jakiro. And Juggy very well may fall here as well. Really nowhere for him to go. And uh, well, he may survive, but uh, it's gonna cost him a death profit if he get, if he survives this. Well, she's gonna go down. Nice Omni Slash to pick up a kill onto uh, Mr. Tide there. And Enigma gonna come in. He does have a black hole, but I don't know if he'll be able to set something up. Well, she's gonna come in here, and uh, Opa, Opa, not even gonna use the black hole. Down he goes, 9-2 to two now, JT. Damn, yo. 7.5k gold lead here, 9 minutes in. <laughs> I've never played Disruptor, but that level 1 kinetic field is insane. He's caught so many heroes in that, and just the slow on it is ridiculous. Yep. Tobacco here, he's got his arcane boots, so another 2k gold in the bank. He's in good shape. Dyer's top tower is under attack. Top tier 1 tower is gonna fall. Looks like the, um, almost the first tower kill of the game. I think Smurf actually picked up a tower kill down here in the bottom lane as well. He's since picked up his Ring of Aquila, as well as his uh, Power Treads. So, uh, <coughs> Shadow Fiend going to continue to be a beefcake here. 1,400 gold in the bank. I'm curious to see what he goes for. If he goes for Blink, if he goes for Lothars, a lot of different options. Opa, Opa, he's going to get the black hole off. But uh, is it going to be enough? Blade Fury going to come in. Well, it's not going to be able to keep him alive. Lesh going to come. Might be able to get a double tap here. Tide does have a Ravage. Not going to blow it quite yet. They do lose their Dark Seer. Tide, you might as well just blow that Ravage, buddy. I don't know what you're saving it for. Instead of some kills, there it is. There's that Ravage. Hopefully they can turn something out of this. Juggy gonna get caught in the kinetic field. Fortunately, not gonna be able to finish him off. Lesh gonna be able to grab that kill onto Krobulus. And Juggy gonna head for the hills. So, 12 to 4. Nice, uh, favorable exchange for our Radiant side. Of course, Lesh, 4, 0, oh, and 2. Wow. 4 1 and 3 Dark Seer, 4 0 oh, and 0 oh, Shadow Fiend, 4 0 oh, and 2 Lesh. That is, that is a scary arsenal of KDA, if I don't say so myself, man. Dyer's bottom tower has fallen. I'm just sitting down here watching this Shadow Fiend because he is farming like crazy. There is no one that can stand up to him right now. And they really need to catch him off guard. Yep. Tier 1 tower in the mid lane in a fall. Lesh going to be the one to pick that up. Opa Opa needs to be careful here. He's got no black hole. And actually, Krajos needs to be a little careful as well. Juggy gonna come in. He's gonna spin. Not gonna have enough to ult afterwards, though. Maybe enough for a kill on the Disruptor. Indeed, it is. Nice block from Enigma with the Eidolons. And that will secure the kill. Very nicely done to finish off Disruptor. A nice little bit of micro from Tempest. Oh, right, God. Enigma. Hard to say if it was intentional or not, but still very nicely done. Nonetheless, beautiful vacuum onto Dondi. And, uh... Down goes Rexar. So, uh, 14 to 5 now here, 12 minutes in. I think they may be able to take out this tier 2 in the mid fairly easily. <laughs> well, poor Dondi. I would concur to that, Dondi. 0 5 and 0 Rexar here, uh, 12 minutes in is not where you want to be. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't know what they're going to be able to do to combat the power of this Radiant team, mostly because of this Shadow Fiend. I mean, Lesh and everyone else are quite scary as well with this Shadow Fiend. Man. He's got a blink now. He's going to go straight in. There's the ulti, and he's just going to go for it. Is he going to go down here? Yes, he is. He's going to pop souls again. That's the recent change I was talking about. Wow. And it's going to do a hell of a lot of damage. Yeah, we're going to see Shadow Fiend a little bit more frequently here in competitive play. Not the... Hugest amount of damage here at this lower level, but still the fact that it pops instantly with half the souls that you lose is... Uh, hey, he can pop it twice effectively. Yeah, exactly. Not cooldown based, so that was kind of a back-to-back -back ulti there. The second one, like I said, doesn't do as much damage, but still helps set up those kills and does, uh, well, does de-incentivize focusing down that Shadow Fiend a little bit. 
Darkseer gonna be in a little bit of trouble here. Gonna try and kite around. Dondi gonna get caught by the Ravage. He's gonna fall. Oh god, is Shakira gonna go down here? Nope, Tide's actually gonna be the one going down. Lesh gonna come in. Is he gonna be able to finish this off? Tobacco very low on health and mana, but whoa, he's already got the Bloodstone. He did break the Arcane Boots, and uh, yeah, he's on Grey Boots and a Bloodstone. That's a 13 minute Bloodstone. And where I come from, that's called GG, so. And you can see the GG's coming out already. <laughs> a 13 minute Bloodstone, that is insane. Desolation and the worlds are one. <laughs> so it looks like that is going to be GG. The uh, dire team is going to quit here 14 minutes in. So there you have it. Tobacco the Han Pro is, uh, well, not too shabby at Dota 2 either, apparently. Who knew? I didn't even know that he was playing Dota. Dyer's middle tower is under attack. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. So we'll get to the score screen here momentarily. I do believe if they all disconnect, it will auto win here in just a second. Though, don't quote me on that. <coughs> Stranger things have happened. Dyer's middle tower has fallen. And yep, there it goes. There we are. Alright, well, there you have it, guys. That was game two from JT Dota versus um, Covenant, I believe their name was in the brackets. We can see a very, very convincing win. 6 0 oh, 5 Lash, 6 1 and 3 Shadow Fiend, 6 1 and 6 Dark Seer. I just want to check the brackets very quickly. I believe that was a round of 16 matchup, if I'm not totally mistaken. And I believe it was. Well, there you go. Um, so there may be one more round playing today, guys. I think a lot of those matches are currently underway. In all honesty, that's going to do it for me. And um, we'll be back tomorrow. So, um, tomorrow starting at 11 o'clock a.m. Eastern Standard Time is when matches will start semifinals straight into the finals. Um, so make sure to join us. Um, hopefully my voice is recovered by tomorrow. CO2 Nas, thank you for joining me. Thank you for rescuing me in the last game. <laughs> no problem. Uh, I'm going to go suck down some menthol and sleep for a, a good 24 hours, I think.